Okay, I'm starting the class, children. So last time we were doing constant pressure calorimeter. I think I didn't use the word constant. So the word which I was using in the last class, the coffee cup calorimeter. Now today I will make you understand why it is called as constant pressure uh, calorimeter. Let's try to understand constant pressure calorimeter, right? So I already explained you this complete working of this cup calorimeter. But during the experiment, this lid is flexible. It can go up and down. This lid is not fixed. If there is more pressure inside, lid will go up to maintain that pressure. If there, there is less pressure inside, lid will go down. So this experiment is done at constant pressure. So you are calculating, you are calculating Q equals to MC delta T by using this cup calorimeter. What is Q children? Heat. This heat is measured at constant pressure. So we call it as QP because this experiment is performed at constant pressure. So this is QP. And this QP, when divided by N, number of moles, is called as, what is it called as? Delta H of the reaction. You're getting it, children? So the cup calorimeter or the coffee cup calorimeter with a flexible lid. Flexible means lid can go up and down. It's not completely fixed. So the cup calorimeter is going to calculate the amount of heat of the reaction by using this equation, which we already know now, by It is, it is measured at constant pressure, so it is called as QP. P means constant pressure. You divide this Q by N, you get delta H of the reaction. But is this Q of the surroundings or of the system, this Q, which you are measuring here in coffee cup? This is water. It is of the surroundings, right? Not the system. Q is of the surroundings. You are going to take the mass of the solution, specific heat capacity of the water. Coffee cup calorimeter, children. Delta T. Right? So this is of the surroundings of the water. This is of the water. So you are going to place a negative sign here. They are of different sign, correct? If water is gaining system is losing. If system is uh, uh, gaining, water is losing. They have different sign. So I gave you these equations. Q equals to MC delta T. For the coffee cup calorimeter, this is Q of the water. In a reaction, when I'm carrying out a reaction, in a cup calorimeter, reaction, dissolution, anything. Q water, right? Then delta H of the system, that is of the reaction, is minus Q of the water divided by N. We are clear about it? Okay. Only Azuni is answering Aditi and Azuni Anil. Yes, what about rest of you? Okay, so I already started doing questions. If you remember, we did this question, specific heat capacity, very important question. You must uh, re-watch the video because we are doing questions only. This question also we did, this question also we did, this question also we did. And this is the question, the last question. We did this question also. And actually this is the question where you are going to use coffee cup calorimeter. 
In the other questions, there's not a coffee cup calorimeter. This is the coffee cup calorimeter question. You are carrying out a chemical reaction. And we did this question also. If you remember first, we wrote the complete equation. This is the net ionic equation. Then we calculated the total volume of the solution. So please watch the video. If you have still some problem, then I can redo the question. It's very important question. All the questions will be like this only. So Q equals to MC delta T. Q of the water. Then you're calculating delta H of the reaction. This reaction, this is the reaction. Is minus Q of the water, which you calculated by using this equation. Mass is there, C you know, delta T is there. See this delta T. So divided by N, delta H of the reaction. N is also there. You can see molarity is moles over volume. So what are moles? Molarity times volume. So you know the moles of Ag plus, you know the moles of Cl minus, you know the moles of AgCl formed. You can plug in that value. And the unit will be joules per mole, which you can convert as kilojoules per mole. My request to all of you, do this question again. If you are not getting the right answer, then watch the video. Whatever question is this, rest of the questions will also be something like this only. There is no trick, nothing. Okay. Only thing they can change the units in place of kilojoules per mole here. They can use the unit like kilojoules per gram. In that case, you convert your moles to grams. Right? In that case, you are going to write down delta H reaction as minus Q water divided by M. M is mass. Now the unit is kilojoules per gram. Delta H reaction minus Q water over N. N is moles. Unit is kilojoules per mole. So they can only play this trick. Like, I don't know in this question, are they asking? No. I show you some questions. Are we okay with this, children? Are we okay with these two units? AP can do this trick. They may ask you to work in grams. Okay, good Nivriti. Okay, now I'm taking you on the next question. Similar question, coffee cup calorimeter. Read the question. It's not a chemical change, it's a physical change. So please check. You are reading the question, children? Okay. So what is the change here? Physical. What are you doing? Dissolution. What is dissolution? Making a solution. So you are taking ammonium nitrate solid. Ammonium nitrate solid. In the cup calorimeter, you are taking water. This is in the coffee cup calorimeter, water. And then you are getting ammonium nitrate aqueous. Dissolution? Dissolution. This change is called as dissolution. It's a physical change. No change in the chemical composition. So... The grams of ammonium nitrate is given. The grams of water is given. 
So can you tell me what is the total mass of the solution? This solution. Total mass of the solution. Is the mass of the ammonium nitrate. This is the error children they do. Here the mass of the ammonium nitrate is given to me. The reactant mass is given. So I'm going to add this mass into mass of water. You're not going to take only water. This is solution, not water, solution. So the total mass is 76.60 grams. Great. After dissolution, the final temperature. So do you know delta T? Yes. Initial is this. Final is this. 23.34 minus. What is happening to the temperature? Is, is it going up or going down? So who is losing heat? Who is gaining heat? You have ammonium nitrate, the system, water as the surroundings. Temperature you are measuring of the solution, means of the water. Wait, wait. Temperature you are measuring of the solution, correct? Water. Cup calorie meter. Cup calorie meter. The thermometer is dipped in water. This thermometer is in water. And ammonium nitrate is also coming in water. This is covered. There is a stirrer here. This is the setup, right? So where is the thermometer? In water, not in the system. Right? And temperature of the water is going down. So it means water is losing heat. It means delta H of dissolution is endo-exo. Dissolution means ammonium nitrate system. Is endothermic positive? You're understanding, children? Water is the surroundings. Ammonium nitrate is the system. And ammonium nitrate is getting dissolved. We want to know delta H of dissolution for ammonium nitrate, that is the system. Water temperature is going down. It means heat is taken away from water in dissolving ammonium nitrate. So delta H dissolution of ammonium nitrate is endothermic. Is it okay? So this solution making is endothermic. You said this temperature is minus 2.34 degrees Celsius. Ready now? Yes, Azuni, system is gaining. Endothermic means system is gaining, right? What is the system, Azuni, here? Oh, is this temperature? Anil is giving me something else. What's the temperature difference, children? Oh, thank you, Anil. Okay, okay, okay. I don't know. Somebody typed the temperature. Minus 1.66. Children, Ariba, Aditi, Lisa, you're okay, all of you, understanding this? Yes, system is ammonium nitrate. In cup calorie meter, water is always the surroundings. Calorie meter, water is the surroundings. Whatever, bomb, cup. Right now we are doing cup. So water is the surroundings always. Okay. So I'm going to calculate Q of the water. Water, right? Because I can calculate only for the solution because I can use this equation mc delta t. What is m here, children? 76 point. Sorry, 
76.60 grams. This one. The total mass of the solution. What is C? It's given solution. So they are not saying water. They are saying assume the solution is mainly water. So just take that specific heat capacity, which is 4.18 joules degree Celsius grams. What is delta T? Minus 1.66. Take this negative sign. Degree Celsius. This is grams. All units cancelled. Only joule is left. What's the answer? Go for three significant figures. This number has three. Answer, children. So please give me the correct calculation. Anil is saying minus 532 joules. 532. Minus 532. It's a physical change. It's not a chemical change. So the amount of energy involved are less. Okay, done. Now, this is the amount of energy liberated by water. They are asking you to calculate the enthalpy change for dissolution. Means delta H of dissolution. Delta H of dissolution is... Minus Q of the water over N. That is minus, minus 532. And what is N? Do we have N? Get the value of N. So, number of moles is the mass of the ammonium nitrate divided by molar mass. The mass of ammonium nitrate is given. This one. 1.60 grams ammonium nitrate. And what's the molar mass of ammonium nitrate? Can you work out the molar mass, children? Ammonium nitrate, molar mass. Naisha, look at the periodic table. is 80.04 grams per mole. So you divide this 1.60 grams by, okay, all of you are giving me the same molar mass, so I'm just taking that. Grams per mole was... Yeah, children, can you hear me now? Okay, sorry, there is some electricity problem here. <clears throat> so you're giving me 0 0.02 moles. How many sig fig for the moles, children? How many sig fig for the moles? Three, So, but 0 0.02 has only two, only one. This has only one. So it should be 0 0.0200 moles correct leading zeros never counted so it is 0 0.0200 lisa you are having problem with the internet oh okay okay no problem lisa so we are just doing calculation when you were not here we just plug in the values here m c delta t and we calculated Q of the water, which is an XO. And then we are just calculating the moles of the ammonium nitrate. So children, they helped me. They worked out the molar mass. We use this equation, this equation. 
to get the moles. Now we are going to plug in in this equation. Q of the water is this here. Take care, there's a minus here and there's a minus here. Minus minus will become plus. You can see that you are getting endothermic. The sign of delta H resolution is positive endothermic. Joules per mole. Put this answer into three significant figures. So these questions, children, are very simple. Answer is 26,600 joules per mole. Can you put this answer into kilojoules in three significant figures? Kilojoules. Can we do this question in kilojoules now? You are going to? So Lisa, try to answer this question. Anil, why? Hmm. 26.6 kilojoules per mole. You are going to divide it by 1,000. Now, all of you are listening. I'm changing the question. Can you put this answer, this one, in joules per gram? Can we do in joules per gram? Means rather than taking moles, what are you going to take? Mass, right? And the mass is given? It's given. So what is delta H of the reaction? It is minus Q of the water divided by M, not N. And Q of the water is minus 532 joules and M is, M is 1.60. So don't convert that into moles. Just divide your number joules by grams. How much is the answer? 3.33 joules. Oh, Aditi, you are wrong. Oh, okay. I'm not doing calculation. I'm just looking at the answer. Anyone else can confirm the answer given by Lisa? Anil, Aditi, and Lisa. Oh, it is. Okay, Lisa, check your calculations. Okay, so it is 333 joules per gram. Okay. So children participate here in calculation, those who are not participating. Ariba, no answer from you. Ariba, listening is not the solution of learning. Nivriti, Ariba, you're not answering anything. Azuni, not helping in the calculations. Ariba, please type here. Are you there? Nivriti, are you there? Nivriti. Okay. Naisha is generally, she is always participating. So, are you confused with this question, Ariba, Nivriti, and Azuni, with these calculations? Are you confused? Okay, good. Ariba, no? Okay, Nivriti, no. So, uh, just an outline of the question. I'm using a coffee cup calorimeter. So, when you see this statement, coffee cup calorimeter, straight away say, oh, what are the surroundings? This is the system. And they have given the mass of the water and mass of the compound. So, you know the total mass. You know the mass of the solution. You know delta T. You know specific heat capacity is also given. So you can calculate Q of the water. Then even without calculation, you can say that water is losing heat because there is a drop in temperature. Drop. So this answer has to be negative. This answer will be negative. Joules. You can work in joules. Uh, answer will be in joules, but you can convert this joules into kilojoules, right? 
This is first step. Second step, calculate delta H dissolution. Delta H of dissolution is minus Q of the water over N or minus Q of the water over M. N is moles. M is mass. Is it okay, children? We are understanding this. Here, in this case, in this case, units will be joules per mole. In this case, units will be joules per gram. So you should be able to use both the equation. Are we clear? Now we are going on the other instrument. So what are we doing? We are calculating delta H of the reactions. So we use the coffee cup calorimeter. In this question, we are carrying out a chemical reaction. In this question, we are doing the dissolution process and we calculated delta H of the reactions. And coffee cup calorimeter was at constant pressure. But warm calorimeter is constant volume. That's why it is called as bomb. Let's try to understand why it is called as bomb calorimeter. You need not to worry about the name. AP will not be testing you for the name at all. But it's fun to know everything. Okay, here in the bomb calorimeter, this diagram is there, but I'll make my own diagram. There is a completely insulated, closed system completely closed is closed and insulated insulated means heat cannot come in and out no flow of heat right now then there is a first layer of insulation this one this is the layer of insulation Like this. Okay. Then inside there is a capsule. Steel capsule. Steel. Made up of steel. Steel means very hard, very fixed volume. Fixed volume. No change in volume. In this capsule, you are going to carry out a chemical reaction. Like combustion. There is no water in the capsule. You can do combustion here also. See this. And you can see this electric wire. You need ignition temperature. So you put your chemicals here in this steel capsule. Okay. Steel bombs. They are saying this complete instrument is steel bomb. This, this is the capsule here. This one. The one which I have made in the center. That's the capsule here. And here is the chemical in this container. So here are the chemicals. And around this capsule there is water. This is water. So the capsule is immersed in water. But water is not inside the capsule. The steel bomb, there is no water inside the capsule. And you are carrying out a chemical reaction. So when you, generally this is used for combustion. So when combustion is taking place, gases are released. So what happens to the pressure inside the capsule? During combustion, let's say I'm doing combustion of CH4 in the presence of air. Everything is inserted inside it. Everything is going inside it to give CO2 plus H2O and heat is exothermic. Combustion, exothermic. So when you balance the equation, it's 2H2O and uh, oxygen's how many? 2O2. Is it balanced? Now you can see that temperature is rising up. When the temperature, what, is, what happens to this heat? The heat will go outside. Where? To water. This is water. 
but here inside the container the pressure is not maintained because this is fixed volume that's why it is called as constant volume so pressure can go up and down if more gases are formed more heat release more high temperature the this can explode also if you don't maintain it properly that's why it is called as bomb due to high pressure very high pressure it can explode generally not in our case in bomb calorimeter we don't do any such kind of errors where it's going to explode our reactions are not going to generate such high pressure are you getting the meaning of constant volume children now this is a closed container do you know the amount of water in this do you know the mass of water no we don't know because this is completely closed every time you are using this bomb calorimeter with a different reaction capsule is here water is here and uh, your thermometer is dipped in water you can see water here and uh, you carry out reaction 1 then you carry out reaction 2 without knowing water amount of water is not given to us so how can i use this equation this one the one which i was using earlier q equals to mc delta t i cannot use because i don't know m you're getting it so this equation is not usable here because we don't know the mass of water is a closed container what equation we are going to use c delta t this capital c not small and what is this c remember i introduce you with the c heat capacity of the bomb calorimeter heat capacity every bomb calorimeter has a fixed amount of water it has a fixed heat capacity which can be calculated by using mc mass of the water specific heat capacity of the water but m is not known to us so we are going to calculate heat capacity by calibration of the instrument i'll give you the meaning of calibration are you clear till now bomb calorimeter so there is a completely insulated container insulated see the terms here pay attention to this picture i'm i'm hope uh, i can explain you again but in case you are okay if you are not okay do let me know the container is insulated you know the meaning heat cannot go in and out correct there is a stirrer what is the use of stirrer here children any one of you stirrer is in water what is the use stirrer stirrer we were using in coffee cup calorimeter also so what is the use of stirrer mm -hmm. when you are heating milk you can check your mother is using a spoon to stir it why she is doing that yes azuni so the better answer is uniform spread of the heat yes yes aditi anil uniform spread of the no no azuni your answer is perfectly all right i'm just giving it another language what aditi azuni said is perfectly all right heat should not get concentrated at one point so when you stir heat spreads uniformly right so it ensures uniform distribution of heat which anil is saying in terms of temperature so it will ensure that the temperature of all the water will remain same means it will increase but it will increase equally all the water right so understand the meaning of stirrer ignition why we need ignition wires children ignition wire this one we need a slight amount of heat why to start the reaction yes very good azuni to start the reaction to start the combustion what is it called as 
activation energy. Every reaction needs activation energy. So we need activation energy, right? Okay. What is the need of thermometer? What is the need of thermometer? To measure delta T. Without delta T, how are you going to calculate Q? Right? So Q is capital C delta T. If I know delta T, if I know C, which I can know by calibration of the instrument, so I will know this, I will know this, I'll get Q. From this equation, can you give me the units of heat capacity C? Heat capacity. Units. Just rearrange the equation. Q over delta T. What is Q? Joules. Delta T, degree Celsius. Yes, very good, Anil. So please, now by this time, you should be expert with the units. If you open any free response question paper of AP chemistry, free response, they are available on the internet. I will also start making available here on the website. You will see that they are emphasizing on the units and sick fix. In the free response, they are very particular. Yeah, because we don't know. Mass is fixed. The water mass is not changing. It's the part of the constant. It's a closed container. The mass of the water is constant. So Anil is asking why we are not taking this mass here. Because it is constant. It is fixed. It's the part of the C. If you know C, you know the mass also. Right? So with mass, we are not doing anything. Mass is not changing. Mass is not involved. So that's why we are just using the heat capacity, delta T, and we'll get the Q of the water. This Q is of the water, right? You see, thermometer is in water. So I can calculate delta H of the reaction as minus Q of the water divided by N. Same equation as we were using in cup calorie meter. Is it okay, children? Okay. Ready for questions? So, in warm calorie meter, we'll use this equation Q equals to C delta T. This C is capital. This C is called as heat capacity. Of the warm calorie meter. Warm calorie meter is at constant volume. Because this bomb, this is the bomb where in which you are carrying out the reaction, has a constant volume. Reactants are here in the bomb. Thermometer is in water. So you will working with the Q of the water. So delta H of the reaction, the reaction which you are carrying out in the bomb will be minus Q of the water over N. Or minus Q of the water over mass. So it depends what they are asking and what they have given. Are we okay with the equations, the meaning? So ready for questions. Read the question, please.
was the heat capacity. Now heat capacity is not given. Delta T is given. Is Q given? No, Q is also not given. So I will use this equation Q equals to C delta T, oh, not H, sorry, delta T, the change in temperature, delta T. I'll rearrange the equation. C is Q over delta T. But what is Q? Q is of the water. This Q is not given. Delta T is given. And my aim is to get this Q. I know that delta H of the reaction is minus Q of the water over N. N is the moles of the reactant, moles of the reactant. So if I rearrange this equation, rearrange this, what is Q of the water? Isn't it minus N delta H reaction? Take N on the other side. Take minus also on the other side. Like this. Any children having any, any child having a problem with this equation? Any one of you? Rearranged equation. But do you know N? Yes, I know N. The formula is given, methane, CH4, right? So the moles of methane is 6.79 grams of methane divided by smaller mass, 16 grams per mole. So how many moles of methane? What is the value of N? Go for three significant figures. What's the value of N? Six point seven nine divided by sixteen. Children, do it fast, please. Yes, moles. So you know N. Do you know delta H reaction? Is it given? In the question? Yes, it is given. See here, energy of combustion, kilojoules per mole. You can see this, children. Delta H of the reaction is given. This is called as calibration of the instrument. You are trying to calculate the heat capacity of your bomb calorimeter by carrying out a chemical reaction in which delta H of the reaction is given. So minus 0 0.424, delta H is exo endo, exo, it's also minus. So reaction is losing, this is moles, and this is also per mole, one mole, mole, mole cancel. What's the answer? So water is gaining, right? So there's a rise in temperature of the water. This answer is positive. How much you are getting? How many sick fix should I take, children? Three. So I'll stop here. Kilojoules. Put a decimal. Then only this zero is counted. If there is a decimal, only then it is counted. If there is no decimal, then it is not counted. So this is Q of the water. Is plus means water is gaining. You can see there is a rise in temperature. Delta T is this. Now can you calculate heat capacity? Yes, this equation, this one. So C is Q water, which is 300. This is capital C. Small c is for specific heat capacity, small c. Capital C is for heat capacity. 
divided by delta T, 10.8. This is kilojoules and this is degree Celsius. So I will get the specific heat capacity in kilojoules, degree Celsius, up to three significant figures. Answer is 31.5. 31.5 units are units are kilojoule per degree Celsius. Check this answer, children. Are we clear about the bomb calorimeter? How to calculate heat capacity? This is called as calibration. In the A part, I'm calibrating my instrument. I don't know how much water is there. I need to know the specific heat, uh, sorry, the heat capacity. I need to know the heat capacity of the bomb calorimeter to do my experiment. So I'm carrying out first experiment, A part, just to know the heat capacity of my bomb calorimeter. Are we good? A part is okay with all of you? Then start reading B part. Afan, where were you? Okay, Aditi has a question. Aditi is saying why it is in kilojoules. Aditi, what is the unit of this delta H? Kilojoules per mole? Mole. Okay. Naisha, mole, M-O-L. Okay. So this is in kilojoules, this one. This is mole. Mole is M-O-L, not M. Mole and mole cancelled. So answer this Q. This Q is in kilojoules. This is in kilojoules. So that's why it is in kilojoules per degree Celsius. So Afan, you must watch the video. We, we, we are doing very good questions. B part. So we know the heat capacity of my bomb calorimeter. That is this one. This is the heat capacity of my bomb calorimeter. Read the B part, children. Same bomb calorimeter, same. We are not changing the bomb calorimeter. So it means this heat capacity is valid here also. They are asking you to calculate the energy of combustion, means delta H of combustion of acetylene. Don't worry about the name. Formula is given. So delta H naught combustion of acetylene in the bomb calorimeter is minus Q water minus Q water is already posted there. Naisha is already there over N. You didn't check it then properly. Naisha, the video I think Ani requested on the same day. So I posted. There was some technical error, but finally it was up there. So to know the delta H naught combustion of acetylene, I need this. Do I need, do I know Q water? Yes. MC delta T. But MC is not going to work here because it's a bomb calorimeter. So in place of MC, what I'm going to take? Capital C. Do I need, do I know this? Yes, I know this. Here. We calculate it in the A part. 31.5 kilojoules per degree Celsius. And delta T, is delta T given in the question? Yes. Increase. 
degree Celsius. Degree Celsius, degree Celsius cancelled. Unit left is kilojoules. What's the answer for the Q water? Yeah, please uh, give me this answer. Is it plus or minus? It is plus. So it is 532 kilojoules. Three sig fig. This number has three. This number has three. Okay. But uh, I need to know delta H combustion of acetylene. I need to use this equation now. Do you have N? This N. N. N of acetylene. That is needed. Acetylene, this compound, formula is given. We can calculate. Yes, very good. So, the mass of the acetylene divided by its molar mass. We, all of you know this equation very well. You divide mass by molar mass, you get moles. Mass is 12.6 grams. Molar mass is? Molar mass. Naisha, you should be first. Molar mass of this C2H2. Mm -hmm. Naisha, look at the periodic table. 2 carbon plus 2 hydrogen. 24 plus 2, 26 grams per mole. Yeah, see, Naisha is writing with the correct unit also. Grams and grams cancelled. So it is 12.6 divided by 26. How much is this, children? Go for three significant figures. 12.6 has three sig fig. Ariba, your answers are... Yeah, okay, you're answering. Good. 12.6 divided by... Afan, start participating. You'll understand. Don't worry. 0 0.487. Moles. Plug in here. So when I plug in these values here, what is Q of the water? So I'm going to take this minus as such. Q water is 532. I'll take care of the units, kilojoules, divided by 0 0.487 moles. Calculate. Are you getting this answer? Answer should be three sig fig. Are we getting this? Four eight five. Okay. Okay, four eight five children. I'm not doing calculations, so I'm just taking what answer you are giving me. So are we getting this answer? It's exothermic because temperature of the water is rising. So it means heat is released during combustion. Units will be kilojoules per mole. Kilojoules per mole. Kilojoule per mole. Is it okay? When you write it like this, Lisa, how many sig fig this number has? No, 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 no. You didn't place any decimal. You are writing minus 1100. These are, these zeros are trailing zeros. There is no decimal. They are not counted. You are going to count only these two. So your number has only two. And if you do it like this, you put a decimal here, then it has four. This is four. Then these zeros are counted. That's why either you take it like this. You take it like this. Now it is to scientific notation. Is uh, one, two, three, three. Yes, uh, Azuni, when you put this answer into uh, three significant figures, your answer will also become 1100. So 1100, you should write in this way. There is no other way. 
to write 1100 with three sig fig. Only scientific notation can give you an escape from here. So that's the reason here the answer is in scientific notation. To take care of sig fig. Everybody is okay with this? Keep asking questions, children. I feel very good when you're asking questions, honestly. Ready for last question on bomb calorie meter? Yeah, these are good. In fact, now all the chemistry is really good. The boring chemistry is over. Chemical equilibrium, real fun. You will like it like anything. Then uh, unit seven, unit eight, acids and bases, perfect chemistry. Gives free energy, electrochemistry, E naught cell, unit nine. Beautiful chemistry is coming now. 68 children. Try to memorize things in the class only. Practice, memorize, do the quiz, and say it done. It should be like this. Like today, maybe I would be able to finish this unit six. Then do the quiz. Don't worry about your marks. If you are doing the quiz, you have seen the question, you are trying to do it wrong, right, doesn't matter. You are reading the question. You are trying to use your brain. You are trying to recall the formulas. This is more than enough for me. I'm very happy when I see you clicked a quiz. Very happy. I never bothered about the marks. Of course, marks, definitely you're going to maintain. So initially, maybe you're getting zero marks, less marks, one, two. Do it again and again. Try to see what was wrong. And that is called as learning. Preparing yourself for the exam. Okay, bomb calorie meter. What is given, children? This is what? Delta T given? 2.54 degrees Celsius. They are asking you to calculate the heat capacity, means this value. They want to calculate, calibrate. They have given the combustion of benzoic acid. See, this is kilo, kilojoules per gram, this one. 26.42 kilojoules, unit, take care of the unit. So delta H naught combustion is given 26.42 kilojoules. What is the sign of this delta H naught of combustion? Sign. What is the sign? energy released energy released wait wait they have not given the sign so you have to take care because they are not giving you they are not saying delta H are they saying delta H children they are not saying delta H what are they saying energy released so when you are going to put it in form of delta H then you have to put sign signs are used when we are writing delta H if I'm writing this line, energy released, I may not put the sign because I'm telling you energy released. Now you should take care of the sign, right? So the question is not telling you the sign, but question is telling you it is exothermic, so minus. So they have not taken minus, so please don't do that error. Read the question carefully and put a sign. Okay, now we know that delta H naught combustion is minus Q of the water over this time. This is grams, so I'm going to use mass. Rearrange this equation. Can I say Q of the water is mass, and of course minus also here, times delta H naught combustion. I'm just rearranging the equation, algebra. Do you know the mass? Yes, this much. Grams. Do you know delta H naught of combustion? Yes. This minus is here. Then I need another minus. 
This is minus, see? 26.42 kilojoules over grams. Gram, gram cancelled. Minus, minus will become plus. Put your answer in four significant figure. This number has four. Put your answer in four significant figure with the right unit, children. I'm getting 4.18. 5. 4.185. Oh, it's very close to specific heat capacity, right? But specific heat capacity is in joules, not in kilojoules. Specific heat capacity of water is in joules. 4.184 joules per gram per degree Celsius. So this is Q of the water, correct? Now, how to calculate specific heat capacity? We are doing this part. I'm highlighting it. So, when you are reading the question, you have to be very alert. When you are reading, you should be able to make out what are they asking, what is given. Reading of the question smartly is one of the first requirement in succeeding in any exam, not in chemistry, in an, every exam. You take any exam. So they are asking me to calculate heat capacity. I know that Q of the water is heat capacity, bomb kilometer. It's a bomb kilometer. C bomb. So C is Q of the water over delta T. Q of the water is here, 4.185, take care of the units, kilojoules. Delta T, is it given? Yeah, this one, I've written, 2.54 degrees Celsius. Are you getting this answer, children? Answer should have three significant figures now, because this number is three. Minimum sig fig. Very good, Azuni. So what's the answer? Are we getting 1.65? Yes. We are good? So are we done with the first part? Calculate the heat capacity of the bomb calorimeter. Now let's see the second part. This question is exactly same, exactly same as we have done earlier. Now I know the heat capacity of my bomb calorimeter. Now I'm carrying out an experiment in that bomb calorimeter and I'll calculate delta H of the reaction. So calibration part is done. Now read this part. Same calorimetry, same. Means this is the specific heat capacity. Temperature, delta T is now 3.25 degrees Celsius. Heat capacity is already done in the A part. Kilojoules per degree Celsius. A part means this part, calculate. This is A part and this one is B part. What is the energy of combustion per gram? They are asking per gram of vanillin. You are aware of that vanilla? Vanilla essence. It's an organic matter, organic compound. So they are doing combust combustion of that vanillin. They, these are extracted from plants only. There is a plant from where you are getting this vanillin. Combustion of this vanillin. So first, I will calculate Q of the water, right? And Q of the water is C times delta T. How much is this, children? 1.65 times 
3.25, an answer will be in kilojoules. Kilojoules per degree Celsius, degree Celsius, cancelled out, kilojoules. Answer is in kilojoules. How much is this? Okay, 5.36 kilojoules. This is the answer given by Azuni. Is it correct, children? Okay, good. Now, what is the energy of combustion per gram of vanillin? So I want to calculate delta H naught combustion per gram. So it means I'm going to use this equation minus Q water divided by not by moles by mass q of the water is this this is plus this is minus so it will remain minus 5.36 kilojoules what is the mass of vanillin this one 0 0.2130 grams answer will be negative with the unit of kilojoules per gram. And are you getting this answer, children? Can you see this is exothermic? Combustion of vanillin is exothermic. That's why water is uh, showing you a rise in temperature. Good, Aditi. Afan, you are doing calculations? Okay, good, Afan. But now they want us to calculate per mole. What should I do? Can you guide me, children? I want to calculate my delta H naught combustion of vanillin in kilojoules per mole. So what equation? I need to do some changes here. Yes. Minus Q water. I need to know the moles now, moles. This is kilojoules and this is moles. But how to get the moles? The mass of the vanillin, which is given? 0 0.2130 grams divided by the molar mass. Can you work out the molar mass, children? Molar mass of C8, H8, O3. 8 times carbon. 8 times hydrogen, 3 times oxygen, add all of them. Look at the periodic table, carbon 12, hydrogen 1, oxygen 152 grams per mole. Aditi is saying this, children, what do you think? Is it right? 152 grams per mole? Okay. Azuni is saying 1. Okay, Azuni, check your calculation because two Aditi and Anil are confirming 152. What about rest of you? Not interested in looking at the periodic table and calculating and posting your answer here? Nivriti, are you there? Ariba, Nivriti, Lisa. Lisa, you're not answering. Earlier, you used to answer very smartly. Yes, 16. You're not helping in ca calculating the molar masses also? Ariba. You know, understand this thing. If you participate, you will remain alert. If you don't participate, you, even if I'm no, uh, no, not uh, doing anything, then I start, my brain start wandering here and there. It's with everyone, it's not with you. But if I ensure that I participate, I'm answering, I'm talking, then only I can remain attentive. Notes you can see in the books, notes you can see everywhere. On my website also, you can see plenty of notes. But participating here is the learning. My focus is that you should learn from the class, not just making notes. That's not the focus. Notes are important. You can make it in brief, but at least participate. 
just to remain alert in the class. So how many moles we are getting, children? How many moles? Get the moles. Grams and grams cancelled. How many moles? Up to four significant figures. Anyone answered this? No? It is 1.401 for sig fig times 10 raised to the power minus 3. These are the moles. Plug in here. Minus Q of the water is? We calculated Q of the water here. So minus and then Q of the water is 5.36. This one. By using this equation, bomb calorimeter. Divided by 1.401 times 10 raised to minus 3 moles. This is kilojoules. When you are going to plug in these values in the calculator, you have to ensure that denominator is in parenthesis like this. Just ensure that. Otherwise, you will not get this answer. An answer should have only three significant figures. Yes. Perfect. That's the answer. With the correct units, kilojoules per mole. We are good? Yes. So that's the end of your cup calorimeter and bomb calorimeter. Now the last topic which is left is heating and cooling curves. We did it earlier, children? No? Like during chemical bonding? No, I don't think. So it's a very important part of learning and very easy. I want all of you, no calculation right now. We'll do calculation in the last question. No calculation right now. So. Pay attention here. Heating, you know. Heating means rise in temperature. So when I'm making a heating curve, so it means temperature is going up. So you can see temperature here. And you can see heat added because you're heating. Heat is added, endothermic. So temperature is going up. This heating and cooling curve is for phase changes. Like for example, I have given you a substance A. A substance A at zero degree Celsius. I'm asking you to heat this substance up to, this is let's say one, 60 up to 160 degrees Celsius. Please understand this concept. There is a substance at zero degrees Celsius. You are heating it. Triangle means heat. You are heating and you are raising the temperature to 160 degrees Celsius. Heat is added. Temperature is going up. The graph will appear like this. Let's try to understand what is happening. At zero degree Celsius, the substance is solid. So zero to 20 degree Celsius, the substance is solid, no change. But at 20 degrees Celsius, at 20 degrees Celsius, it starts melting. That's the melting point. The solid starts getting converted into liquid. A phase change is taking place, liquid. So this part, this part is representing both solid and liquid. This part. Is it okay? And now at this point, it's pure liquid, completely melted because you are supplying heat. Yeah, this part solid to liquid actually, children, 
it's, you can see there is no rise in temperature. Temperature has become constant because this is equilibrium. It's a phase change. Equilibrium we'll discuss in unit seven. So right now you just take it as a phase change. The way, who is saying latent heat? Anil. Yeah, latent heat means hidden heat. Latent word, if you see the meaning, hidden. Heat is not appearing as a rise in temperature. There's no rise in temperature. But heat is used. You are using heat. See? This much amount of heat is used. Where it is going? Is doing work. It's used in overcoming the attractive forces. Solid is melting. So you need energy to break attractions. That energy is not showing you any rise in temperature because it is consumed as work. It's doing work. So latent heat is the heat which is needed to overcome attraction. So latent heat word is not popular in chemistry. It is more of physics. So are you clear that whenever there is a state change, there is no rise in temperature, right? So, children, what is it called as? This one, solid to liquid, delta H of fusion. Agreed? Delta H of fusion, solid to liquid. Now, at 20 degrees Celsius, up to this. Up to here. What is the state? Liquid. It is just liquid. This is liquid up to here. This is liquid. But what happens at 120 degrees Celsius? Up to 120 degrees Celsius, it is liquid. No phase change. Temperature is going up. No phase change. It's liquid. Temperature is rising. But at 120 degrees Celsius, again, the liquid starts getting converted into gas. Phase change here. Liquid to gas. Vaporization. And this is called as delta H of vaporization. Very good, Azuni. Vaporization. Again, there is no rise in temperature. What is delta T here? Zero. What is delta T here? In this case, zero. But here you have a delta T. You can see 20 to 120. What is delta T here? 100. Here also you have a delta T, here, delta T, 20, right? After this gas, above 120 degrees Celsius, above this, here, this is a gas, and up to this 160, what is the state of the matter? 120 to 160, what is the state? It's a gas. Is it okay? Are you clear about there is a, when you are changing the state of the matter, there is no rise in temperature, right? From the heating and cooling curves, you can see what is the melting point, boiling point. Are you ready to answer this question? A. Freezing point and melting points are the same. So 20 degrees Celsius is the melting point or the freezing point. B. Okay. What is this heat called as? This much heat? This one? What is it called as? And what is this called as, this one? This one. Which one is more? In which case more heat is needed? Yes, why? That's the question. C part. 
Why is it so? Why delta H of vaporization is more than delta H of fusion? This question you have done earlier also with me in unit, I think, three. Yes. Because going from liquid to gas, we need to break nearly all IMFs. Gases have negligible IMFs. Don't break the bonds, Aditi. We are not breaking bonds, Aditi. It's a phase change, solid to liquid to gas. Chemical composition is not changing. So what we are breaking? Only IMF. This is a very important question in AP exam. What are you breaking? Chemical bonds or IMF? So during physical changes, we are breaking IMFs. Very good, Aripa. Perfect. Azuni, good. Good. So when we are going from solid to liquid, we are just weakening them. We are just lose, like slightly, you are loosening them, making slightly free. But you are not overcoming them altogether. Solid to liquid. We are just making them slightly weaker. But liquid to gas, we are trying to overcome them completely. This is your delta H of vaporization. And this is your delta H of fusion. Is it okay? Now, this question is done, but I have few questions. I'm going to mark them as A, B, C, D, E, F. You're going to tell me the state of the matter, state of this substance. If it is here, what is the state? If it is here, what is the state? If it is here, what is the state? Yes. Okay. If it is here, what is the state? No, dear. It is the point on the line BC. At this point, I'm going to change the color so that you can see. At this point, the state is solid and liquid. Both of them are there. It's melting. It's not completely molten. Solid and liquid. Both of them are there. It's not completely converted into liquid. It's, it has started melting. So solid is there. Liquid is there. Both of them are there. Are you getting it? Remember, this represents solid in equilibrium with liquid. What is the state here? Liquid and gas, both of them. Liquid and gas. Okay, now I'm marking this point. D point. What is at the D point? Solid, liquid, liquid and gas, or only liquid? At the D point, only liquid. At the D point, only liquid. Liquid has just started boiling. So it's only liquid. Because liquid has just started boiling. It has just started. Okay, so it's, it's totally liquid. Vapors are not there. And what about this one? At this point, only gas. At this point, A. At B point, B, B children. At B point, this one. At C point, C. Yes. I hope all of you have understood this. So this can be a question. They will give you a heating or cooling curve. And they will ask you this, the type of question which I just asked from here. Okay. Can you draw the heating curve from minus 50? 
with this information. Substance X has the following properties. You have to start from minus 50 and go up to, let's say, 100. They have not written 100 degrees Celsius. Can we do that? So this is the temperature. In degrees Celsius, going up like this. This is the heat. SQ. Starting point is? Yes, all of you please. Starting point is? Minus 50 degrees Celsius. Azuni, minus 50. This, right? And then, at minus 50, is it solid or liquid? Look at the melting point. So I'm going to mark these points. Let's say, this is minus 15. Let's say, this is 75. And let's say this is the final 100. It is solid. So minus 50 to 15, the state is solid. So temperature will go up. The graph will appear like this. Agreed, children? Minus 50 to 15, no change in uh, state of the matter. So temperature is going up. What happens at minus 15? What happens? It will become constant. Melting. Melting has started. And this is your delta H of fusion 5.0 kilojoules. This is delta H of fusion. This value from here to here is 5. After it is completely in the liquid form, then the temperature will start rising up. It will go up to 75 here. This one. But at 75, it starts boiling. It will become constant again. But this time, this value is more. See, 24 times. This is 20 kilojoules. This is delta H of vaporization. You know the reason why. Once it is completely in the gas form, then it will start going up. This is the heating curve for this substance X. You can see a flat line at the melting point first. You can see a flat line at the boiling point. But when the state is not changing in the solid form. There is a rise in temperature. There is a rise in temperature in the liquid form. There is a rise in temperature in the gaseous form. So, children, this was, I was trying to make you understand the heating and cooling curves. But in the next class, we are going to do this question based on this heating and cooling curves. And then we are done with this unit six and we'll start unit seven. If you have any questions, you can stay back in the class. See you in the next.